So it is currently six six oh seven. My first day here in Colorado with Mr. Trent, and uh, we so far have spent the day cracking whips. Carding my Cooper Sportswear Indie jacket. This was one of our main projects when he was making a visit. Um, he loves his Cooper Sportswear very much, but he always knew if he were to ever get a a full dressing of um, any sort of conditioner, really, but mostly with the recent. Um, learning of brown card which has a it's not a dye i recently read it's a i'll have to look back into it but it's not a dye it smells like shoe polish something relative to that um but he asked me just fast forward he wanted me to you know put this on his jet and so far <laughs> We are watching some good stuff on the TV. Oh, and we played Jumanji. Yeah. Morgan played over the phone and he won. He won. He won over yeah, the so phone. Yeah, so he had a spot on the game board. He played and he won by, what was it, 12? Yeah, because he needed 12 spaces to win and I threw the dice for him and landed. And you knew right away. Directly on 12, yeah. Jumanji! It was beautiful. So, starting off, tell us, Trent, what is on the wall? It's a whip. Um, this is probably one of my most beloved and most uh, highly renowned acquisitions I've ever um, sought after, even though it wasn't necessarily planned. So this here is a Del Carpio whip made after a Morgan style from 2004. This was made in 2006 by Bernardo, and it was uh, cut, all the all the strands of the overlay were cut from a really thick kangaroo hide that David Morgan uh, gifted to Bernardo at one point, and Bernardo returned the favor, made us into a beautiful whip. At one point after that, he found himself visiting David in Washington, and he pulled it out of the bag, David inspected it, and he cracked it in his shop. So this very whip was uh, cracked by the man himself and let Bernardo know how well of a job he did. And they were talking shop more throughout the visit. And then at one point, David took this very whip and hung it on his wall, thinking that it was one of his own. It's a real compliment to Bernardo. So fast forward 15 some years later, it hangs right here in our house. And I uh, don't crack it as much respectively Honestly, it is because the hitch right below uh, the eye of the fall is pretty loose. It still holds itself pretty good, but I just, you know, I just wanted to semi-retire it, only crack it whenever applicable. So, that's that. And I uh, just thought it was nice to have a picture of the two above it. And Bernardo provided me with the quote that says, First learn my ways, then improve upon them. It's from David Morgan. And... I just uh, like to reflect on that because these are not easy to make. So it's a really nice piece, and <laughs> out of all the places in the house, next to the bathroom. <laughs> but hey, it's fine. Um, so I've actually uh, did Nathan a favor on his Cooper Sportswear jacket. He kindly asked me to condition it, and I chose to execute that request with brown Picard dressing. It's a little shocking to me that those in the community do not realize that brown Picard exists. And it's not so much a dye, it's got different chemical additives to it to make leather uh, refurbished. So it conditions and it darkens, I'd say, more rapidly than just your typical dressing. So the way I applied it, uh, we just sat in the sun, we sweat for a little bit, and then I just took some uh, a fresh container of brown Picard and mixed it with a rag, and then I applied 
the conditioner onto the entire surface of the jacket with a rag. In case you're familiar with Mason's, I can't talk today, I never can, Nathan's jacket before, it was very gray. And going from that to this brown, quite a difference. So, Vladdy's happy, I'm happy about it too. Probably one of the best services I've ever done to someone secure. With conditioner. We're aging it, we're making it healthy, and yeah. Now, uh, just to simplify, if we open up my closet, I do have some of my leather jackets all in the style of Indiana Jones. They range from Raiders to Last Crusade, and then I do have a Temple of Doom jacket in there, which I really like. And then there's also a World War I bag just hiding there. Uh, I also got Temple of Doom pants and some shirts and a couple of scarves for Mr. Raven Blues. <laughs> I'm not going to open the bag, but in here is where I store my whips. These are a really good way to store them. Um, if you could ever find maybe like a tennis bag, this is one from Western Stage Props way back in the day. It's either Western Stage Props or North and North Go, I forget who. But you can easily go on eBay or anywhere on the internet and find these symbols storage bags. It's a perfect way to store whips. Kirk does the same thing. That's where I got the idea. Um, really simple gift and cheap at that. Uh, if you ever want to get somebody who is a whip enthusiast, a gift. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good choice. I also have more nylon whips in there and a couple other ones made by Torrance. But who cares about that? Let's go to the shelf. I have uh, one of two vintage cases. I don't plan on using this. I found it at an antique shop for really cheap. This here is a gift from Nathan. We played it earlier. It's very fun, very cool, and I'm probably going to display that on the bottom shelf where I currently have the uh, magazines that were released earlier this year for the 40th. Hats, I have my garrisons. I got three garrisons. I got the beavers, I got the old rabbit, and then this is a beaver brand. It's a really rare one. Very lovely colors, lovely felts, um, holsters. Two Webleys, both made by Evan at Franklin Pratt Leather on eBay. Or sorry, no, Etsy. Then you got the old and new leather by Reese. This is my truck chase holster. And then over here is the um, Spade and Archer Leather Studio Raider style. It was the first right-handed style that Roger ever made. So I'm very happy to have it. It's a lovely color. Um, I keep my belts over here. I got some tarantulas. If you want to show those really quick, Nathan. If I ever want to do a chapter point temple little get up, I got those. They have magnets on the back so I can uh, stick those on. And come to the other side, one of those. I'm going to stain. That could be fun, who cares? Got my WG bags, which are accurate to Raiders. This one has the longer side loop. Strap is made by Kyle Nibbling, and this one is Mega Jones. Both are the accurate buckle. Sorry for bumping your arm. You're good. Here we have Kurt Brockman. <laughs> um, this is my Temple of Doom getup. It looks better on the mannequin than it does me, and let's face it, these things are really hard to dress up. But on top, we got my Smithsonian Last Crusade hat. It really doubles extremely well as a temple fedora especially from some of the diagonal angles. Lovely felt, lovely construction. And I don't think I mentioned it, this is uh, Steel and Jones. Going to the shirt, this is a costume base. Yes, costume base shirt. I weathered it originally and then Kirk took up on it too. So it's weathered by the both of us. Um, I utilize the sleeve from this side as the hand wrap. It just made sense to me. I'm not really sure if it's accurate, but you know, ingenuity. Belt, just a just a web belt, you know. This one, as well as my one of my two LC belts, is from. Um, I got these from Alex in our Colorado Jones group, but these were originally made by Brian Lalonde. Really good belts. I I don't know who made this whip holder, but I love it. I think it came with our Del Carpio whip, the one that Kirk and I share. Just 
kept it because it was a really nice whip holder. And the holster is one that I recently acquired from Andrew Newell, and also a Spade Archer leather holster. Back strap is again Kyle Nibbling. It's really hard to tell. We might have to trade places here. It's another rare bag accurate to Temple of Doom. It could use a die job, but I just keep it how it is. It's vintage. Posters, pretty standard. I got this at a, a store here at one of our malls. This one's from a con. It's a really rare one. And then that's made by an old coworker. He runs a printing shop, so he made me that for Christmas one year. It's pretty cool. This is from Spirit Halloween. <laughs> really cheap, but it, you know, gets the point across. This is one of my newer vintage cases. I got this from a lovely couple on Etsy and really great condition. Love the British locks. Everything about it's perfect. And especially the color. Really nice Raiders color. Um, torch is awesome. Absolutely awesome. And I say that because I know a lot of people don't own them. This is made by Brian Long. Jones Inc. for props on eBay or Facebook. I, I really don't understand why people do not purchase these because this is one of the most authentic props I think I own. This is a legitimate torch. You can see, if I kind of rub my finger on this, it's real soot. You can actually burn these things. Now I got this one um, in thicker wood because I wanted something that I could, you know, carry at a con. Because if we look up here, mounted on the wall is a more screen accurate torch that Brian offers and this is very heavy. It's over three pounds when you're carrying that thing after some time. It really catches up on your, your muscles unless you're, you know. Anyways. He also makes these mounts for the wall. You don't have to nail them in, I just use the, uh, what do you call them, command strips. Holds pretty good. So this is uh, his accurate and heavier version. I just like that one for variety. But again, if I go to a con, I can just pop it on my shoulder and not have to stress all day long. So, that really seems to be it for Indie Gear, I believe. Oh, actually, it's not. But wait, there's more. Come with me. Don't mind the longer. <laughs> actually, I'm going to flip this one. So, we got props. A couple more hats. Tugnarelli truck chase with a truck from my childhood. Some gloves, some more props that Andrea has made. This, as well as the idol, are 3D printed. Brian also made these, uh, the darts and the arrow. Uh, who else? Andrea also made the Sanskrit and the chain for my 3D printed medallion from the Raven Bar. A couple other, you know, knickknacks. You can obviously make out what's what. One of the coolest ones I think I have is the stone here. Kirk Brockman made this many, many years ago, and I went ahead and gave it a new paint job. The one behind it, as you can see, it's different. Made by Andrew Newell. It's really cool. If I can acquire another handmade stone from somebody, then it would be cool to have three, but also from different people. Because I just like variety. Um, and obviously my beloved Fedora Raiders, my old diplomats that I moved just today. Got another Kelso. Here's one of my newer Kelsos. And my Steel and Jones with the hole in the sink. Yeah. Okay, so day two of the Colorado trip. I am in Partial indie gear. Well, actually, I'm almost in full gear. Full, just not your jacket. Yeah, just not my jacket, not the wet. But I got everything else on. Uh, Trent and I are about to drive up to Denver to visit Mr. Kirk Brackman. And we are excited. Are we excited? Not in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> so, not to correct Nathan, but we're actually going to Castle Rock. It's halfway between here in the Springs and Denver. If we were going to Denver, that'd be very exhausting. We're saving that for Saturday. We're actually having to go past Denver and then more west towards Superior, where Kirk is holding his venue this Saturday, so stay tuned for that. Um, either way, yes, we are very excited. It's an exciting day. 
as Kirk would say in the past. Um, his main plan, because today is his birthday, he wanted to meet up with us, out of all people, and, uh, you know, do a photo shoot, crack some whips, and maybe grab some lunch, I think he said, too. It'll be fun. So we've made it up to Castle Rock. We are in gear, and we're just waiting on Kirk. There he is! So here's Kirk getting into all of his Temple of Doom gear. I have my screen accurate cargo shorts. Yeah. Everybody remembers Indy's cargo shorts. Yeah, for, you know, in Indy 5 when he goes to Woodstock. Yeah. And he's got his Hawaiian shirt and his Birkenstocks. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is Kirk Brackman. Hello. He is uh, one of the biggest, if not one of the best, Temple of Doom cosplayers in the indie community. Well, shucks. That, that, those are some, uh, those some mighty, mighty kind words there, friend. Well, a majority of people I know who get into Temple of Doom gear usually reference your stuff as like how they got all their gear together or where to look for the right gear. Well, that's cool. I mean, the whole reason I kind of got, I started making like the YouTube videos and stuff was when I was looking for hats, like back in 2011, 2012, um, <laughs> and I made the exciting Peter's Bros hat video. Um, essentially, like back then YouTube wasn't, or wasn't what it is now, and there weren't the videos out um, that there are now, and that was my go-to for trying to find if things were legit or not, looking for testimonials or reviews. And so I essentially just wanted to make the type of video that I wanted to find, or, or I wanted to see um, to find gear. But the pool of Temple of Doom cosplayers is pretty small, so <laughs> being, being one of the main ones is not a hard pass. Well, I want to be quite honest, it is your love and appreciation of Temple of Doom that has given me a new appreciation of Temple of Doom, to be quite honest. I'm going to get a close-up here of your TOD jacket and your very beautiful AD Vintage. Look at that. Also, for anyone who's curious, peeing with gear on in a public restroom? Not practical. No. <laughs> it took me a hot minute. You want to find a battle buddy to hang with, too. So we are here at, uh, what is this place called? Uh, Philip Miller. Philip S. Miller Park. We were at Philip S. Miller Park in Colorado. Cracking whips. Oh, no, you're good. And uh, Trent is cracking his 10 foot Steve Townsend Raiders whip. And getting stuff in my eye. Yeah. <laughs> the perfection of that whip is just. Outstanding. Um, maybe not here, unless we go a little further down. Yeah. So Nathan is about to crack a vintage David Morgan bullwhip. Built by David Morgan himself. Yep. The satisfaction. Pretty smooth, huh? Butter. Butter. Yeah. Dude, how did you get your hands on this? Um, I was selling it on eBay when I was like a little kid. That was like my first whip. The whip was a vintage Morgan built by David Morgan? Yeah, he was a collector. It was like, you know, it's his collection. And he never used it. Yeah, it had never been cracked. What oh, shame. Some people, I know. Nice. Oh no! 
Ew. Oh, you actually got it? I know you hit it. Did it cut? Oh, dang. So, quick, quick question to you, Trent. Yeah. Why are you cracking your whip on the AstroTurf? Um, it's soft. It's a preferred surface. The grass is pretty chunky here where we're at. At uh, Philip Miller Park, located in Color no, Colorado. Castle Rock is funny, man. But if you can see the difference, so, more so over where Kirk's standing, it's pretty dense. But obviously this is pretty dirty now over on the Astro Curve. Furf, 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 furf. Free, free, free. <laughs> um, it's flat, but also if you're, um, if you're a fan of aesthetic in gear, especially nothing except a bullwhip, um, you can actually age a bullwhip pretty quick. Maybe not the most safe, but nothing harmful at that with just these little bits of rubber. It's a hot day, so as the whip is moving around, it's gonna make it a little bit darker, a little, maybe scuff up the surface just ever so slightly and uh, blacken it to make it look like you just came out of the wall of souls. And I get a kick out of that because this being my newest acquisition in a Raiders bullet, why would I want anything clean? You know what I mean? Trent is now gonna do for us the Cairo Flash. One of the most famous and probably my favorite Indiana Jones whip cracking routine. Go for it. Okay, so we are on our way back from cracking whips with Kirk. We've been driving for 20 straight minutes. Probably more. We are very tired, and we are going to go back to Trent's place to get a, a lot of water, get into some comfortable clothes, and just relax. And here we are, August 14th. The Colorado Jones Con is today. Trent is finishing up getting ready. I have all my stuff packed in my Indy suitcase. Now it's just a matter of jumping in the car and getting going. Do not mind the fuzz on the camera, but we are on our way to the Colorado Cosplay Con! We're about an hour and a half out. Trent and I are in gear, ready to go. Here, let's try that again. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trent and I are in gear, ready to go. I just dropped my my lens cap, so that's going to be fun to fish out, but, <laughs> but we are on our way, and when we have something more exciting to update you with, that'll be next. That's something with his fortune and glory, dude, because Morgan has the same one, and it's just so... It works. Yeah, it does. Oh, you know, it sucks. I saw like part of my hands are slipping. Jesus. Please do not mind the fans in the background, it's a bit of a toasty day, but I'm stopping the video here because I feel the need to explain something about this whip that Trent is cracking. Firstly, we got to the Colorado Cosplay Con to find that there was only a handful of us there, and one of the members, Alex, brought his Blake Bruning Trinity Whip Company Fortune and Glory Whip with him because the fall needed replacement. Luckily, there was a replacement on hand. Alex and Trent put in the new fall and replaced the cracker, and Trent was asked to break in the new cracker and fall, which he's doing here. Once things got rolling, things really got rolling. I can't thank Kirk or Trent enough for this awesome experience. I can't thank Kirk enough for inviting me to this convention. This was probably one of the greatest experiences of my life, something 
that I can easily look back on when I'm an old, old man and say, yeah, thems were the good old days. It was a small, intimate space, but though it was small, it felt huge. It was just a number of us getting together, having a good time, enjoying cosplay, enjoying the things that make the nerd culture what it is. A love and appreciation for the fantastical. And I could not have had a better time if I tried. So thank you to everyone who showed up. Everyone who took part in that convention. Everyone whose hands I got to shake, whose names I got to know, and whose amazing costumes I had the privilege to look at and inspect. You guys are the reason I love this community. You are the reason I got into this community. And I cannot wait to see you again in the future. So, it is currently 9.35 at night. Trent and I have finished up our day. The inaugural Colorado Cosplay Con was fantastic. Um, I got my honorary Colorado Jones certificate. We got to meet a lot of great cosplayers. I meant to do more interviews and I didn't and I'm so mad at myself. I was just so excited to be there. Um, I won't turn the camera toward you, but do you have any closing remarks, Trent? I can't give the same ones I gave in Kirk's video, so I won't. Um, nah, dude, honestly, just glad you came out. I'm happy to come out. It was best time ever. Ever. Just slaps. Narration time. One more time, because my camera battery died, and I wasn't able to record the last two days I had in Colorado, which were pretty awesome. Trent took me on a tour of his old stomping grounds and just showed me around Colorado, which is a very beautiful state, just fantastic. I took some pictures of the landscape going up to the Colorado Con, which is a little outside of Colorado Springs, but still gives the general idea of Colorado as a state. After a tour of his old stomping grounds, we went back to his place, cracked some of his nylon whips, and then just hung out. The last day was pretty much the same. We went to Fargo's Pizza, which is incredible and delicious, and then we sat down on his couch and watched Last Crusade as a perfect capstone to end this trip. And as I was getting packed up, ready to go to the airport, he stops me and he says, I have one more thing for you, which blew my mind because <laughs> he'd already given me so much. He comes back into the, in the room and he says, so you know how you said that if Kirk ever made more Sankara stones that you would buy one? I said, yeah. And from behind his back, he pulls out a Sankara stone and he tells me, this was one of the first ones Kirk made. He gave it to me, I gave it a paint job, and now I think it should go to you. It went straight in my satchel and now sits right behind me as I'm recording on top of my Indiana Jones collection. It is now going to be one of my most treasured pieces because it comes from two of my new close friends, Kirk and Trent. From there, Trent took me to the airport and you are now about to see the final thing we recorded together before I jumped onto my two flights home. Well, it was requested that I do this video for this guy. Unfortunately, we're heading back to California. Golden State. Yeah. Uh, we're doing this in the car because it's raining. You can definitely hear it, so we're trying to be as loud as we can. Um, I'm going to miss you, but I, I just loved every second of you coming out and hearing your um, admiration for Colorado really makes me feel good being here because 
Colorado's kind of a weird state sometimes. I'll leave it at that. But, um, yeah, dude, come back soon. <laughs> Travel safe, even though it's not up to you. Um, do you want to say anything? No, you pretty much summed it up perfectly for me. Summed it up. So, we're going to go do some quick hugs outside the car and not get these poor rabbit hats oh. wet. Boy, it's starting to come down. So, um, yeah. That's good, dude. Thank you, my friend. And here we are. Home again. I wasn't kidding about this Ankara stone. <laughs> um, but I, I, I will never forget these last five days. Ever. After the insanity of last year and the strangeness of this year, the last five days were the most needed vacation days I've ever had. Oh! And of course this. One of the most unexpected presents I've ever received, but one I am forever thankful for. This is gonna get hung up right over there with the rest of my indie gear, where it will be displayed and framed so beautifully. Um, the only thing I can do now is just thank everyone that was a part of my trip, mainly uh, Trent and Sarah. Thank you so much for welcoming me into your your wonderful home and treating me so much like family. Thank you for the fun. Thank you for the laughs. Kirk, once again, buddy, thanks for inviting me to the Colorado Con. Thank you for asking me to hang out with you and Trent on your birthday. That was just the, the coolest thing ever. Thanks for yeah, having us climb a mountain. We climbed Castle Rock to take some really awesome cosplay pictures that you can see on his cosplay page, that you can see on my cosplay page, uh, both of which will be linked in the description below. But most importantly, just thank you for all the fun. I, I will never, ever forget this. I know I've already said that, but it feels the need to be reiterated. This was the greatest week of my life, and I wouldn't take it for anything else in the whole world. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be back with some very fun videos in the upcoming days, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody.